Hey, Dreamer, I've got something special and just a little bit different for you this week. Back in May, I was a guest on Connecting in the Chaos podcast hosted by one of my podcasting students, Heather Onkin. And you might recognize her name if you've been around here for a little bit. Heather was a guest on Devoted Dreamers, episode 197. We talked about how to know when God is speaking to your heart. So go check that out if you missed it. But Heather and I had such a great conversation when I was a guest on her show. We talked about how we can better support our friends in their dreams and what to do in case you're the friend who's been feeling a little bit alone in your dream. And Heather gave me permission to replay this conversation from her podcast here on Devoted Dreamers. So like I said, this one's going to be a little different. You're going to hear her music instead of mine. But come on back next week for one of my fabulous solo episodes. Those are getting great reviews. And in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this replay of how to support our friends in their dreams from when I was a guest on Connecting in the Chaos podcast. Let's face it, making friends as an adult is hard, and growing those friendships is even harder. How often do we say, hey, let's get together for a girls' night or catch up over coffee? But then you throw in that little thing, you know, called life, and it seems we rarely follow through on even our best intentions to connect. Sure, we can blame it on distance, but let's be real. Even those of us who live in the same city barely see each other unless you count that quick wave from across the aisle at the grocery store. If you can relate, my friend, then you are in the right place and you are not alone. Welcome to Connecting in the Chaos podcast. I'm Heather and I am passionate about helping you find simple ways to nurture meaningful connections with the people you care about. Every week, I will give you practical solutions to cultivate deeper friendships, live with more joy, and connect over what matters. So let's shift out of autopilot to find real connections, even in the chaos. Hey friends, and welcome to another episode of Connecting in the Chaos. Today I have with me my friend Merit Ansa, and we are going to be talking about how we can support our friends in their dreams. Merit is a trail guide for the passionate, creative Christian woman who wants to get over her fear of failure, comparison, and imposter syndrome so she can get moving on her God-shaped dream without wasting more time second-guessing herself, procrastinating, or trying to be perfect because it would be a tragedy if her God-shaped dream stayed hidden. Merritt hosts a weekly conversation on the Devoted Dreamer podcast, talking with Christian women about their dreams, their fears, and how God has transformed their faith in the process of attempting courageous endeavors. Merritt is just an amazing woman, and I know that you guys are going to love her. I've been a listener of the Devoted Dreamer podcast for the last two and a half years, so it is so fun that I now know Merritt personally and that I can call her my friend. This episode is for those of you who have a friend who has a dream. We want to share with you why it is so important that we show up and we support our friends and their dreams and how we can do that. You know I'm all about the practical side. Also, those of you listeners out there that are pursuing their dreams, first of all, you won't want to miss Merit's The Devoted Dreamer podcast. You're definitely going to want to check that out. But also, if you are feeling alone in your dream, don't worry. This is for you too. I know that stepping out and starting something new can feel lonely, but we will chat about how you can create that circle of support. So regardless if you're the friend or you're the dreamer, this conversation is for you. Hi, friends, and welcome. I have a very special guest and friend. Merit is with me today. Hi, Merit. Hi, Heather. I am so excited about this episode. We are going to talk about how to support your friends and their dreams. And Merit is, I don't want to say the dream expert, but she has an amazing podcast on pursuing your dreams. And so I thought, who would be better to have this conversation with than her? So I'm so excited to have you here. Oh, it's so fun to get to have this conversation. Thanks for the honor to be one of your earliest guests. Yes, yes. And I took my podcasting course and learning how to do this from Merit. So she pretty much taught me everything I know. 
you're doing great. You're doing awesome. So I wouldn't be where I am without her. So, so grateful. But we're going to talk about helping to be there and how we can show up in our friends' lives when they are pursuing a dream. And I feel like I want to kind of lay the groundwork of what we're talking about when we say dreams, because it doesn't have to be like this big, something huge. I mean, you're going back to school. You are in the work world and your dream is to stay home and be home full time with your kids. It can be maybe writing or starting a blog, starting a business. I mean, I think our dreams can look so different. Each person is very unique in what their dream is. But I think the one thing that is important with whatever your dream is, that you have somebody beside you, you have friends that are supporting you in those dreams. And so that is what we are going to talk about today. And as I was telling you before we got started, is I always kind of like to just do a little bit of research before my episodes, just to kind of see what people are saying about things. And I wanted to see like what the most common ways people support their friends and their dreams. And I could like find nothing. (laughs) The Google search was when our friends don't support us in our dreams. I mean, I go, okay, clearly we need this episode (laughs) because there's nothing that is telling us this is what our friends do and this is what they do really well. And so I think we can help people change that. Totally. I know. That's why I'm so excited to get to talk about this today. And hey, maybe you'll rank in Google. Maybe, maybe. (laughs) Here's your chance. (laughs) Oh, that's so funny. So I think my first question is, why is it important that we have friends that are supporting us when we have these different dreams? Well, I have to assume that everybody listening kind of has an idea of like when you gave those examples, that maybe something popped into your head of, oh yeah, that thing that I did or Like going back to school is a great example. You know, my husband's about to do that in a year. (laughs) I mean, I just think that we kind of all maybe have a sense of what it looks like to take on something that's completely outside of what you are currently doing. So you're going to make some sort of change, make a turn, whatever it is, things are going to start to look different in your life or you hope they are. And it just takes an incredible amount of energy to shift out of that comfort zone. And so just as I was thinking about this question, I was, I was kind of listing like, yes, the mental energy, the emotional energy, the spiritual energy, and the physical energy, like all the ways that we as humans function to make a big change or to choose to do something new, something you've either never done before or something you're creating out of nothing. It's huge. And if we don't have support to do it, I just think it's so easy to give in to the, like once it gets hard, because it does, any of those things, there's going to be a day when you're like, this is way too hard. I can't carry this all by myself. And that's when we need to know, even if the person's not right in front of us, that like somebody's got our back, that we have a cheerleader, that we have somebody that we could call or send a Voxer message, like I'm having a rough day, help me not quit. Right. Absolutely. Because I think we all have that point where it gets hard and we want to give up and that somebody can help point us back to our why of why we are doing this. And sometimes when we are in that fog of exhaustion, it's hard, lack of energy, all of those, we may not see that why or that why may not be super clear. Mm -hmm. And so to have somebody who's like, no, you've got this. And this is why you're doing this. This is why what you're doing is going to be awesome. Like just pointing you to all of those things that maybe at that point, you can't necessarily see because for whatever reason, but I think that that is super important for sure. And yeah, just kind of like reminding you who you were when you made this decision to change this thing, whatever it is. Right. Um, Those people that have some history with us, it's huge to have their support. I think the other thing that I wanted to say, you mentioned being exhausted. And I think some some of the other things that come up for the person who's kind of like made this shift in their life, you're not just tired, but you're also overwhelmed with 
learning a lot of new things all at once, trying things that fail and having to like strengthen yourself to like get back up and do something else. You're juggling a lot. Like you have kids or, you know, if you're managing a home or if you have a job or any of those things. And then on top of all of that, like there's so much doubt that comes Mm -hmm. in that you have to battle. And that's a hard road to walk down by yourself. So it's helpful to have like an, a person external to you that can see what you can't see. And honestly, it's a spiritual battle. And um, we need some people that we can lock arms with and walk with, even if they don't have a clue what it is we're doing, you know, like you're going to med school and your buddy over here has no clue about anything that you're fascinated by. Like, it doesn't matter. We can still, and we need the support of the people that are right there with us. And we also need people to celebrate with us. I mean, if we're doing this on our own, who's going to be there when there's a reason to celebrate. And that can look like little victories. Like if you're in school, okay, you finished a semester. Okay, maybe you don't have the degree and you're not done. You just finished a semester. Like go celebrate. Like take that friend and celebrate her. That was a lot of work. That was hard. Mm -hmm. And I just think like when I, you know, started and I launched my podcast, just having those few close friends to be able to like send little screenshots of, how many people had downloaded it. And those were just those, they were small little celebrations, but that I had people that were just as excited as I was. And that meant so much because it's not that much fun to celebrate by yourself, right? It's pretty lonely (laughs) and kind of embarrassing. You're like, well, I'm the only one that cares about this. Right. And I think like, as people like see you on that journey, you know, like I said, whether it's school or you're starting a business, you know, you can set these goals of, well, when I finish this, when this launches, whatever, we're going to do this. Like we're going to get together and, you know, we're going to have a girl's night out or whatever it is, just something that, you know, when you meet that, that there is somebody at the other end that's going to be there. And you guys are doing this to celebrate that. And I think going back to the hard that sometimes that what you can see at the end gets you to that point of like, okay, I know this is hard right now, but when I finish this, when this deadline is met or this last final is taken, okay, then I have dinner with this person or we're having a girl's night in. She's coming over and we're going to just have a glass of wine and catch up. And those kind of things carry you through the hard. At least that's how it's been for me. Totally agree. So how do we be that kind of friend? So that's what I was going to say. I was like, (laughs) sounds great. (laughs) I want to be that friend. How can we do it? So just thought maybe we could just come up with a few just simple, tangible ways that our listener who's got a friend with a dream that they can show up today. Yeah, totally. Well, I love the examples you just gave. Like, and there's not always a finish line, you know, like school is kind of an obvious one. But you gave two examples of like, go out for a drink or go in for a drink. Like, I think you got to know your friend, you Mm -hmm, know, like, is your friend an introvert or like, oh gosh, it would be a huge chore to put on heels and a nice outfit to go out. Like, please just come to my house in your pajamas. (laughs) Yes, that would be me. (laughs) Ditto right here. So yeah, I think we need to, to either ask or know our friend well enough to be like, what would feel like a celebration. And even I think just asking the question like that I want to celebrate with you is huge. Yeah. And let them figure out what would be, what would feel celebratory to them. Right. Exactly. Like what would be, what would be fun for you? And I think like going back to what are some ways to show that support in their dream is for me, I would say probably the biggest thing I can say is ask them about it. Like Mm -hmm. ask them questions because it may not be your intention that you're not asking them, but I'm going to tell you more than likely if you don't ask them or you pretend like what they're doing doesn't exist, it comes off to them like you don't care. And if that's not the reality, then ask them. I mean, just a simple like, hey, how is school going? Or Hey, that business that last time we got together, you told me about that you were starting. Where are you at in that? I mean, just ask questions to let them know, hey, I care about what you're doing. Even if you don't necessarily understand what they're doing Mm -hmm. or you don't have to agree with it even, just letting them know 
that you value them as a friend. This is what they're doing that is important to them that they feel called to do. And you coming alongside them and asking them, that validates that for them. I will tell you out of experience, (laughs) it does. It's so simple to just say, hey, how's it going? And show them that you care. Yeah. And if it's somebody that you are close to or you want to get closer to, I mean, you can dig in and ask a harder question. Also, even if you know nothing about it, you can say like, what's been the biggest challenge? Or, you know, what have you learned in the Mm -hmm. last couple of months? I mean, and that's like a jumping off question for all kinds of growth in your friendships where you get to hear what your friend is really moved by and passionate about and experiencing. And then maybe you'll get to share a story too. I mean, it's just such a, I don't know, conversation opener, which just, and then let it go from there. (laughs) Like For sure. And I think like the other thing that's super easy is also just asking your friend, what do you need? Like, Mm. is there something that I can do? And there may not be anything, but at least putting it out there, that will show them this person's invested, this person cares. I mean, maybe it's, yeah, I could really use some, a little bit of extra time to study. Do you mind like taking my kids for two hours? Or maybe it's, you know, I have midterms going on this week, maybe bringing a meal one night that she doesn't have to also worry about dinner every night, just something super practical like that. If she's starting a business or writing a book, just say, Hey, is there any like feedback that I could help you with? Like, is, are you picking out any like colors or decor or, you know, just anything that you may need somebody else to like bounce an idea off of? I'm here. And so just putting it out there, what can I do for you? I think would go a long way with that Mm -hmm. person with that dream. Yeah. Just to show, even if they don't say yes, just to show that there's an interest and a care. For sure. And just that, yeah. And I think probably nine times out of 10, the person will be like, no, I'm good. Because I think mm-hmm. that that's just our, that's just our general response, which I also think we need to get better at that. Because- well, we don't always know, right? We don't always know what we need when we're in that place. We don't so always know. I love the things that you mentioned, like bringing somebody a meal, in my opinion, is like a hundred percent win every time. Yes. And just and- say like, I'm coming on Thursday, bringing yes. you something. Well, and I have started just because of location wise and stuff. I've met so many new friends that are not in the same state as me. Like this is not any more like friendships based on proximity. Location. Yeah, And so it's now more been a, okay, if you're going to order out dinner, where's your favorite place to be? And getting a gift card and sending it to them and putting in the card, this is for dinner one night on me. So you don't even have to be like local to support your friend. If she is states away, there's so many places that you could send a gift card and still get dinner for them and promise you they will be so grateful. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) who isn't happy to have a night off of not having to worry about dinner? Or maybe that's just me because (laughs) that is not my gift. (laughs) My family's like, we're having that again. I'm like, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Yep. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> Sorry, guys, not my gift. So let's pivot just a little bit because I feel like we've touched on what we can do, giving those people some ideas that have friends that they know are pursuing some type of dream. I want to touch just for a little bit on the listener who is listening to this right now. And she has a dream and she's chasing after that. And she feels like she has no support. She feels like her friends have checked out, have little to no interest. I want to give her some encouragement. We can do that, right? (laughs) I think we can do that. Yeah, I mean, just even as we're talking, I was just feeling a little bit of a heartbeat for that person listening. I'm like, but wait, what about me? What if I'm the friend that feels ignored and that everybody has forgotten me. And sometimes we have to ask for what we need. That might feel extra hard if you're already running on all cylinders and every ball is in the air and you're exhausted. And it might just feel easier to be like, forget it. You know, (laughs) like I just don't have time or I don't have energy, but I think honestly, we all know that we need people. We need people to be in it with us, even if they don't understand it. 
And sometimes it just means like, hey, can I, can I share a little bit about what I've been going through right now? Or do you mind if I talk about this for a few minutes? It depends on your life stage or how you connect with friends. Like I connect with people right now on Voxer and by text. And so it might have to be done in that way. You know, maybe we'll get some face-to-face stuff here soon but it might require you being a little bit vulnerable to say, I've been exhausted or to even admit, like, I know I haven't reached out lately. I've been doing X, Y, Z, but I'm realizing I really could use some support. And it might look like this, whatever it is. I mean, sometimes it's like, hey, could you just like my Instagram posts for every now and then? Right. (laughs) Like it would be helpful to see a friendly face there or name. For sure. For sure. I don't know. Did you have some thoughts on that? Like, well, I just thought like that, that takes being really brave to do that because I don't think vulnerable. Yes. And I don't think a lot of us are wired like that. I think there are definitely some, I can think of a couple of people would have no problem telling or saying like what they needed. And I actually, I wish I was more like that because sometimes when we don't know how to like share and to tell people like, this is really important to me. I wish that it was important to you. And I wish you acted like you cared what ends up happening. And I don't think we mean for it to happen, but we end up harboring some bitterness and resentment in our heart towards that person because we feel that they should be responding to our dream a certain way. And we've really put on them an unfair expectation. So but what happens is it, it goes into our heart, not theirs. <laughs> so we feel like they should respond a certain way. They're not. And then we carry around that bitterness and resentment towards them because they're not being the friend we want them to be for our dream. And so I think that there's that fine line of if you don't feel like you can go and be brave and be vulnerable to your friends and say, hey, this is really important to me. And would you like my Facebook comments or my Instagram comments? Would you you know, just show up a little bit more for me in this? And I could really use a cheerleader. If that's something you don't feel comfortable doing, then I just caution you to just watch that resentment and bitterness that that doesn't take root in your heart because that's really hard to pluck out once that goes down into that heart. So, and you don't want to carry any of that around because that's not going to really help you with your dream (laughs) when you're carrying that extra weight around. (laughs) Well, and I have a story on this very thing. (laughs) It wasn't related to a dream. Friendships and expectations, like that's huge, right? Mm -hmm. In any relationship, wherever your expectations are, like that's where you're going to find some disappointment when they're unmet. Yeah. And my experience has been that the only way to root out that resentment is to actually go tell the person. And so what's worse, you know, right. like having to go be like, I'm so sorry, I've been resentful towards you and you didn't even know it. And it you know, it's not even your fault because you were just living your life. And I'm over here with like expectations at the ceiling. I mean, I think it goes down to also like, we might not have friends that support our dream and If you're a person of faith, like, yeah, we have to go back to that source, like the author and perfecter of our faith, who's going to be the one that carries us through those hard seasons of feeling alone. And then it might require finding some friends in other areas that can support you so that you can continue to nurture the friendship that you have that's close to you, that's important to you, that has longevity, but maybe not place all those expectations on that person. Yeah, for sure. And I think the other thing that I just want to point out that I think is important because when a friend kind of checks out or it's crickets and you haven't heard from them, I think our first instinct is to think that it has something to do with us. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned is that sometimes when you are pursuing your dream is it makes other people feel uncomfortable because you are stepping out of your lane. When people get uncomfortable, I have noticed sometimes they act out of character and you're like, why is this person acting this way. And it may be because they don't know this. You're going back to school. This is going to take a lot more time out of your life. Are you going to have time for them? Are you going to have time for their friendship? Like, oh, right. right. And I also think that sometimes when we step out into this dream is it sometimes can cause our friends to have to do like a self reflection on themselves. And maybe there's something that has been in their heart that they have thought about 
pursuing and going after. They know this is what they're supposed to do. And for whatever reason, they've not chose to do it at this point. And watching you chase after your dream is just that like smack right in their face of like, Mm -hmm. why are you not doing what you are called to do, you know? And so that may make them kind of step back a bit, but it's really got nothing to do with you. And I think we just sometimes need to give ourselves the freedom that it probably has nothing to do with us and talk to them. I think like, that's the other thing that's, if you have been friends with this person and you guys have invested in each other, go to her and just share like, Hey, I'm just not feeling like you care that I'm starting this business or I've gone back to school and you're one of my closest friends. And it would just really mean a lot to me that I have your support. And she may also feel terrible because she may not even realize that she hasn't been showing up. Cause I think a lot of us, we are so busy in our day-to-day lives that we totally are not even aware of how we aren't necessarily showing up for other people. Like I will never forget. I have a friend and she still is a good friend of mine. And this was probably like five years ago. And we were like, just at a get together. And I love her because she is somebody that is just totally fine, like calling you out on things. And because she did this, I think about this all the time. And she goes, you know, whenever we have a conversation, you never ask me about myself. You never ask me about me. And it wasn't that I didn't care about her. I mean, I was like, so do you want to know something? I am so much more sensitive when I am in conversation with people that I make sure to let them know like, hey, how are you doing? What's new in your world? I had no idea to her was not showing any interest that I cared about anything that was going on in her life. And that could not have been further from the truth. Mm -hmm. And so that her having enough boldness to say that to me, it changed how I interact with people. And it's awesome that you were able to stay friends, (laughs) like (laughs) that it's okay to say like, this is what I'm noticing. Yeah. And that you were able to receive that and be like, okay, I want to be different. I want to do a better job. Because I think I totally, when she said it, I was like, you're right. And I was at a a point in my life that I think I had just had the twins. My life was chaotic and I could not see outside my life because it was so out of control. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I had no idea that I even had friends around me that needed just for me to just ask about them and just show some interest because I had been so consumed with my the chaos of my world. And so that was, yes, very much a a wake up call. (laughs) And I am definitely much better when I'm in a conversation to make sure that I check on people because it was also very, it was just embarrassing. Like you don't ever want to be that person that is just seen as it's all about them. So your friend may not know (laughs) that you are interpreting that she doesn't care about your dream. So give her some grace and Mm -hmm. give her the chance to show up and be different when you let her know, hey, this is important to me. And I think there's like gentle ways to say that. Like it doesn't have to be this like confrontation, you know, because all of a sudden the the other person gets defensive. It's like, gosh, I would love it if you'd ask me about this, period. Yep, super easy, super practical. And I think the last thing that I just want to say is, you know, some of our friends are only for a season. Some are not Mm -hmm. forever. And you may be pursuing a dream that is going to change what that circle of friends looks like. I listened to somebody and I feel terrible because I can't remember who it was that I listened to, but she said the average friendship is five years, which I thought was really crazy because I think a lot of us feel like a failure if our friendships are not forever. And so there, some are just for a season. So with that, if you are pursuing your dream, pursue avenues that you can find some friends that have the same dream as you. So if you're going back to school, people who are going back to school with you, if you are starting a business, like there's so many networking group for entrepreneurs, those people are in your same circle. Those people, they know what you're going through. They can be your cheerleaders. When I started this podcast, I do have very fortunate to have friends that have been supportive and excited. So I'm very grateful for that. But nobody that I knew prior to doing this podcast has ever done a podcast. Like I have friends that listen to them and that's the extent. 
And so I found friends in the podcasting world because there's just something about this group that knows exactly what I'm going through when I'm dealing with certain self-doubt or why am I doing this? Like they can point me back to my why. They can help me refocus when I, you know, want to quit or I want to give up. And so finding that group that is a part of your dream, I think will help give you that support that you need if you can't find it in your friends right now. Do you agree? Totally. And I think that's a a helpful expectation to communicate. Like you made me think about the five years thing, like my mom friends that we all had babies together, but like once kids go to school, it's a different group. And so Mm -hmm. absolutely, like there is nothing wrong with, we'll just call it branching out and finding an additional or new circle of friendships that can support you as you're pursuing that dream. And just to know and receive all friendship as such a gift that it's not forever. Nothing is forever. So I love that. And there are Facebook groups. There's so many ways. There's so much. There's so much. Yes, for sure. And like for me, I've met so many new friends through starting podcasting. And like I said, nobody's in the same state with me. Like nobody's close. And so like Voxer and Zoom have become my my hangouts. And I'm so grateful for them. I'm just excited to have just those people supporting me and and cheering me on. And I feel like that takes some pressure off of my friends that I have been friends with prior to this life of podcasting and starting a business and all that, it gives them, take some pressure off them that they don't have to be everything to me. They can just be my friends. They can be excited for me, but they don't have to know exactly what I'm doing and it's okay. A hundred percent. I love that. So this has been so much fun. I yes, love- I'm glad to have made your friendship <laughs> through this. I know, I know. I love this so much. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be able to come on here with you and to inspire and encourage people to become better at being there for their friends that are pursuing their dreams. And then to also just keep encouraging that dreamer to just not give up and where she can find her her circle of people to give her her support. So I think this is going to be very encouraging for our listeners. So thank you so much. Thanks, Heather. Hey, friends, head on over to my website, connectinginthechaos.com and download my free resource, Simple Ways to Be Intentional in Your Friendships. I hope this helps inspire you with simple ways to be intentional in your everyday life. Thanks so much for listening and have a great week.